or turn to Acts 26 this evening. Um, I <laughs> I do apologize. Um, I know I often say it like if I've been out of the pulpit for a week uh, that you're in trouble the next time I'm in the pulpit. Um, and and again, I edit my sermons. So I am well aware of how long I've preached the last two services, including last uh, last uh, Wednesday. And it's never my intention to go like over 45 minutes on, on a Wednesday. Uh, I know some people are like, are you kidding me? Uh, but it, it's not. I just I want about a 40 to 45 minute uh, 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 lesson. I don't want to say lesson, but Bible study. And, and then for us to, uh, and on Sunday, I mean, if we, uh, 55 minutes is my target. Um, yeah, I know, I know. Um, but uh, but I encourage, just, you know, forgive me a little bit. We'll work on it. Uh, amen. And, uh, and we'll see where we can go. Uh, but we're, we are picking up here in chapter 26 of Acts. Um, we, we Again, we're, we're, we're going through his, his uh, defense, I guess you would say, uh, to Festus and to, uh, and to uh, uh, King Agrippa. And again, the purpose is simply to find out what do we say to Caesar when we send him there. Uh, and so they're gonna, giving him an opportunity to, to to defend himself, which apparently he does a pretty good job on. We're not there yet. Uh, maybe we'll get there before uh, the, the new year comes around. Um, but uh, verse 32, Agrippa says, uh, uh, Agrippa said unto Festus, if he wouldn't have wanted to go to, uh, you know, said I want to go to Caesar, he'd probably be free right now. Uh, now, now again, I believe that a lot of what um, Paul is doing here is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I believe, I believe what he's doing here, and I believe it was time. It was time for him to go there. It was time for him to uh, to, to to experience that. And so, uh, where some might say, "Well, he just opened his mouth too soon," uh, no, I believe he opened it up under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That there was a protection about him not to send him back to Jerusalem. Uh, because that could have been their choice. Well, we're not going to send you to Caesar, but we need to get to the bottom of this so it doesn't keep re reappearing, and we're going to send you to Jerusalem anyway. Um, so so he's, he's defending himself, and then he gets to the point here where he's just simply saying, listen, this is what God told me to do, and that's what I'm doing. It. And, uh, you know, it's the same God that, that they had me going killing for. Um, and uh, and uh, again, 16, 17, and 18 are brand new to any any area in Acts uh, regarding his testimony. And um, and in verse 18 is where we've kind of settled down here for the last couple of weeks. And I think in at least another week, maybe two more. But it says, uh, here's the reason why I've been I've been called to be a minister. I've been purposed to be a minister or servant under oarsman, and I've been purposed to be a witness of what God did, has done for me and what he's going to do for me, what he's going to show me. And the reason I've, been, I've done that <coughs> is to open their eyes, verse 18, to turn them, and I, I do like that because it feels like we're responsible for the turning. We're responsible. Now, last week we dealt with that. We are the light of the world. Jesus said that. We are the ones that... that that uh, what the world sees regarding who Jesus is, how good He is, how faithful He is, it's up to us. What do we show them? And, and, I, and I, I liked that last week, and I know I ran through it quickly at the end. I know some of you say nothing about last week was quick, Pastor Thad. Uh, but the point is, is that it's our, it, it, we're, we're, we are to shine our light, and we are supposed to raise our light. A lot of times we wait for God to open up opportunities. If God would open up an opportunity for me to preach, I would preach. If God would open up the, uh, an opportunity for me to sing, I would sing. Well, beloved, if you have been called to do something, then it is your job to raise your life. It's your job to do it. It's your job to, uh, to you know, I don't even know how I could preach. Listen. I, I there, there's some people online uh, on, on social media that I think why are they doing what they're doing? 
There's some people that, that they'll say, I have a devotional I want to share with you today. And I'm like, who's listening to this guy give this devotional? Why would they listen to him? Why would they listen to Bill Johnson? Why would they listen to, uh, to, to Mark Hankins? Why would they listen to Jerry Savelle? Why would they listen to those guys? But if this guy's got a word in him, then it's his job not to wait until the pulpit opens up, but to raise his light, to let his light so shine. And so, so we dealt with that, and I just, again, I think it's worth just remembering uh, where it says to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto, the, unto God. Um, and I do think it's interesting there, and I, I know you could, you could insert the assumed, and from the power of Satan unto the power of God, which I have in my, um, in my reading in the past, but the, the interesting thing here is this, is that that word power um, can, brings out domination, dominion, authority. Uh, in other words, it brings out I, I'm almost the concept of bondage. And I'm not saying that that's exactly, I'm sure there could be more uh, pictures there. But in other words, it, 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 there's a lot of people living under the bondage and the domination of Satan, and what they need to do is be set free unto God. And, and, and so the, the picture here, and I, I, as I was, I, I spent a lot of time meditating on this because I really didn't know where to go. And so I, I need to stick with my notes here because I could get real teachified. Um, Jesse, on Sunday when I was leaving, the, uh, leaving we were leaving together, and, um, and she goes, Somebody got preachified this morning. I said, so yeah, somebody did get preachified. Well, usually I'm teachified, where I just got carried away teaching. Um, but the word power here literally means dominion or authority. I want to kind of insert a, uh, uh, a word that, that is what the Holy Spirit showed me is kingdom. It, 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 from the kingdom of Satan or the kingdom of darkness unto God. And you could really insert there the kingdom of God. Now again, when we're dealing with power and authority, that word uh, causes a lot of panic in people. The power of Satan. He's got power. How much power? So the devil made me do it is actually a thing. Because he's got power to make you do things, right? That, that's, that, and that's kind of where I want to sit around here for a little while today. Um, because Satan is misunderstood, I believe. And, I'm not, and I just want to insert this. I actually don't have it in my notes. I wrote it in uh, as I was meditating on it later on. Um, a lot of people look at Satan as the equal opposite of God. That God is all-powerful and good. Satan's all-powerful and bad. That God is all-knowing and good. Satan is all-knowing all and bad. And, and, and it's not that way at all. God is all-powerful. He is all-knowing. He is omnipresent, which He's everywhere. And Satan is limited. He doesn't have all that. He's not, he, he's not all-knowing. Matter of fact, one of the things that we learn uh, through this is that you know He doesn't have the ability to read your minds. You know, sometimes we, we, we think, well, I had a bad thought. He doesn't know. He didn't know that. You know how he finds out? Because your big mouth. You, you said it out loud. You you're like you're like uh, uh, you know you're you're kind of afraid something's going to happen and it's with you with you with you and finally you verbalize it to somebody and then it happens and you're like oh the devil knew what was in my heart no he didn't. You, you opened your mouth. Yeah, you, know, you opened your big fat mouth, right? Yeah. You know, what what what's the you know, blabber mouth? I don't know what that was on, but uh, that's kind of how I feel. Satan is limited, and even more so for the child of God. But but he's limited. He's not the equal. He's been defeated, but it doesn't mean he's not without his power. Again, Acts is New Testament. It's New Testament church. And so what we need to understand is that in existence, in the world, there are two kingdoms. And again, 
I, I know that nas- nations and things unlike that, there's more. But even inside those nations, within those nations, within existence, there's two kingdoms, and it's simply the kingdom of God, it's, and that's not heaven. Uh, heaven is a part of the kingdom of God, but it's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing and, 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 and operating. And then there's the kingdom of darkness, which is obviously the enemy system, but it's a system of bondage. It's a system of domination. You, you want to know why so, so often it can be hard? You get born again, and, and you immediately do something. Uh, you know, let's, let's just say love. Let's just say love. You immediately love people that you didn't you, before hate because the love of God's in you. But you want to know why it's hard to move on from that point and continue to love that person? Because of the bondage. You've been gripped for so long that it's really easy to move back over into hatred and strife and all that kind of stuff because of the bondage. Satan is not trying to be your friend. Well, you know what? If I die and I go to hell, I'll just party with all my friends. That ain't what it's about, bro. He is not uh, down there with with some keggers and trying to get you guys uh, partying with him. He's there to ruin your life, and he's here on earth to ruin your life. Now, both Jesus and John the Baptist uh, in, in the Gospels declare that the kingdom of God is at hand, which is referencing the life of Jesus and saying that Jesus is coming to this earth to introduce God's operating system through himself. And everything that Jesus did, everything that Jesus walked in on this earth, everything he operated in was God's system operating. Because it was time for his kingdom. The kingdom of darkness had been for 4,000 years. And now it was time for his kingdom to be. (laughs) There were, Old Testament is full of pictures. It's full of types. It's full of symbols of God's system. But again, it's very hard, and the Jewish people are proof of this, is that it's very hard to translate from the physical to the spiritual unless you have spiritual insight. Unless you're born again. It's hard to make that shift. So a lot of times people are still going, uh, well, we've got to, you know, we've got to sacrifice the lamb. We've got to uh, make matzo ball soup. And we've got to, we've got to do all this kind of stuff to, to operate under the Passover. Understanding that the Passover lamb of the old covenant is Jesus of the new covenant. So the Old Testament was a picture of, Everything about it. So, so there are there are deaths, there are deaths in the Old Testament of 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 people that we go. That is so un, un, unfair. It's so wrong. What well, was a picture of what happens to you in the Spirit in the New Testament? Is that when you step out of God's best, there's death uh, to you. Amen. So, so, so it's really important that when Jesus came. He was now saying, listen, what, I, what I'm introducing and what I'm bringing is God's system the way he, has, he set it up originally and the way it's going to operate from here on out. So our ministry and our witnessing should be, uh, should be intended on turning people away from the power of the kingdom of Satan under the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. <coughs> Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, says this. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? So there was a power. There's a power that the enemy has. And when you've been born again, you've been translated out of that power and into the kingdom of his dear son. Think of, think of it like this. I know I've said two kingdoms, but if you think of it like this, that the kingdom of Satan is not a kingdom, it's a, it's a bondage. It, it, it's, a, it's a power. But the kingdom of God is liberty. It's a system. It's, it's, it's how you work and operate freely in his system. 
So you say, but Pastor Thad, what about the kingdom of darkness? What about the authority and the dominion of it? Is it that strong? Is it something to worry about? And the answer, I think, believe, beloved, is yes and no. <laughs> to, be, to be fair with you. Um, it's, not, it's not what we think it is. It's not, that, it's not that Satan can go around doing whatever he wants to do. Matter of fact, uh, uh, go to 1 John chapter 4. Should we understand and respect what's going on? Absolutely. <laughs> Nothing that we do in life, in the Christian walk, should be done out of fear. Absolutely nothing. We'll deal with that in a little bit here. But it should be, I believe it should be done out of respect and understanding. In other words, I'm not fearing, I'm not fearing what the devil could do to me, but I respect that if I... I'm going, to, I'm going to say it this way. If I'm not operating in the kingdom of God, then I am operating in, his, in Satan's kingdom, in, under his power. And when I respect that, when I understand that, it keeps me wanting. I want, I want, I don't break the law in, in America solely because I don't want to go to jail. I don't break the law in America because I enjoy America being free and being able to walk the streets and being able to operate financially. You follow me on that? All right. But in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says this, and this is for us. This is for the children of God. This is, this is why he said we need to turn them from the power of God to the power, uh, uh, from power of Satan to, to God. Because 1 John 4, 4 says, Ye are God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you. So do we need to do we need to worry about the kingdom of darkness? Do we need to worry about that bondage? No, because greater is he that is in me. So as long as I'm submissive to him, I'm not a part of that. I mean I understand the, the concern, but you know, if over across seas, over across the seas, if they're shooting people for serving God in a Muslim country, let's say, I, that that concerns me. I need to be aware of it. But I'm not concerned over here that I shouldn't do it because they're shooting people over there. I'm in a different kingdom, and in my kingdom, greater is He that is in me. Yeah, than he that is in the world. And we'll, we'll, we're going to deal with that in just a moment. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. <laughs> and we're, we're familiar with this. Be sober, be vigilant. In other words, respectful, understanding. Get your mind straight on this. That your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, walks around just devouring whatever he wants. No. We know that. He seeks who he can devour. He cannot just devour anybody. He does not have that kind of authority. His authority is limited. Now, now, now to what? To his kingdom. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 2. I know I'm just giving you a lot of scriptures here, but that's just kind of how I, I received it. And, um, I, I want to, you know, be obedient and, and how I give it to you. And I want to keep moving. And all of God's children said, please, pretty please with sugar on top. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead, now you're alive. Excuse me, verse 2. Wherein times past you walked according to the course of this world. So you used to just walk. Can you, can you say it like this? You used to walk under the power of darkness, under the power of Satan. That's the, that's the course of this world. That's this world's kingdom. According to the prince of the power of the air. So that tells us that he is literally the prince of the power of the air. 
of this atmosphere. Uh, and, and again, that last part, the spirit that worketh in children's obedience. We'll, we'll deal with that in a moment too. I know I'm giving you a lot of commercials here, but uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. <clears throat> Verse 4, it says, In whom the God of this world, understand that's not God, Yahweh, that's the enemy, that's, that's Satan himself, whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel of Christ, the image of God, should shine on them. <laughs> so the power of Satan as the God of this world, his system is operating in this world. How about John 14, verse 30? <laughs> now listen, I am not asking, I'm not telling it. We, you need to be scared. You need to be, you need to, you know, be, be afraid. No. Because again, greater is he that is in us. The enemy, Satan has an authority over this world. You say, I thought God has that authority. In the beginning, God gave dominion and authority to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sold it for an apple. So therefore, he became the prince of the power of the air. Uh, John 14, verse 30 says, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. John 12, 31, John 16, 11. So he uses that same phrase, the prince of this world. <laughs> so he has authority in this world. The chaos. People say, well, well why is God, why does God, a good God let bad things happen? Because man sold the rights to this world. Now, understand this. Colossians 2. <laughs> I, I know we're moving here, but I don't want to. I don't want to just sit here and tell you, God better watch out, better not pout, right? Because this is good news, but it's news that we need to understand. Colossians chapter two, verse thirteen. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, used to be dead, used to be under the bondage of the uh, the, the God of this world, hath He quickened together with Him having forgiven you all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it away, nailing it to the cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he hath made a show of him openly, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, what Jesus did on the cross, defeated Satan, defeated him, took away his authority, and gave it back to man. How do you enjoy that authority? Being a child of God. Having your trespasses forgiven. Having Him taking up residence inside of you. You now have authority over the enemy and can thwart Him in His path. When He comes against you, you have the authority to stop Him. So when Jesus went to the cross, he defeated the enemy, took away his authority. And that authority has been given to his body. And he has put all things under his feet, which is the body. So as children of God, we've been taken from the authority and, the, and dominion of Satan's kingdom. We've been placed in God's kingdom. And, and, and again, I would like to say it like this. The authority and dominion of Satan's bondage and have, placed, have been placed in God's system, his kingdom. And he no longer has authority over us because greater is he that is. I'm repeating that again because I want that in us. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But he does operate in the world. He does have access to those that are not operating in the kingdom of God. Ephesians 6, verse 11, you don't have to turn there, but it says that, that Satan has wiles. He has schemes. He has plans. He has thoughts. He has, he has ways of operating to kill, steal, and destroy according to John 10.10. 10. So he's still operating. But he can't operate in us. And we, through prayer, have, have access to introducing God on the scene of things that he... That, amen? 
All right. So we have the authority to tell them to go. I'm not going to read these scriptures, but in Matthew 18, 18, it says whatever we bind is bound. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. <laughs> James chapter 4, verse 17 says what we resist will flee. It says resist the devil and he'll flee. What we allow won't flee. And again, 1 John 4, 4, the power that's inside of us is greater than anything exterior. It's the season of, of the flu. COVID's on the rise. Allergies run amok. There's all these things we need to be worried about. No, that's, that's in the kingdom of this world. We live in a superior kingdom, a kingdom of light. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm mentioning this only. The centurion understood the authority. He said, Jesus, all you, I understand authority. I tell a man to go, he goes, I tell him to come, he comes, I tell, tell a man to do this, he does it. He said, I know authority and you have it over sickness. You have it over the enemy. So what Jesus tells to go, goes. What he tells to come, comes. And what he says to do is done. And in Matthew 28, he says, all authority has been given to me. Now I give it to you and you go. Therefore, beloved, whatever we tell to go, goes. Whatever we tell to stay, stays, comes, comes. And whatever, whatever we tell to do is done. The power of our mouth. So you say then, well, Pastor Thad, I guess I don't have to worry about it then. <laughs> if I'm born again, I'm in his kingdom and everything, I don't have to worry about his power, the power of darkness, do I, Pastor Thad? Well, let me tell you a story. This has been years ago. I, I looked it up on my phone to try to, to, to get the information. But do you guys remember a couple of years ago where, where an, an American snotty-nosed teenager went over to Singapore and, and in part of his trying to uh, uh, have some fun, he started vandalizing cars and spray painting cars and some, the side of some buildings. And when he found, when he got caught doing it, he thought they're going to slap my hands, shame on you, bad boy. Mom and dad will pay a fine. And they said, nope, we're going to cane you. Take the cane and put it across the back of his legs. Remember that? Remember how upset everybody was in America because it was a kid having fun. Well, see if he would have stayed in his kingdom. He would have been under that kingdom's authority, but he went to Singapore's kingdom and now had to face the, the penalty of Singapore's kingdom. And we, and, and, and America, I guess, I guess what I was reading is that it caused a uh, tension between America and Singapore for a while after that, because how dare you? No. He came out, he, he, he was not in your kingdom anymore. He chose to leave that kingdom, even though he was an American citizen, even though he had rights in that kingdom, he was not in that kingdom. He chose to step outside of that kingdom. Now, beloved, this is where Christians miss it. And again, I understand what we're talking about here specifically, um, that we're turning them from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of, or the kingdom of Satan, into, in, into the power, in the kingdom of God. I understand that, but I want us to understand this. This is why we want them, is we want them to live the life that, that God has given us to live, the life that, uh, that is ours to operate in. But beloved, as Christians, this is where we miss it time and again. You're born again. You have total rights in the kingdom of His dear Son, yet you start doing things that are, con that are outside of the boundaries of that kingdom. You start acting like you're in the kingdom of darkness. And then they can't figure out why the enemy has access. Let me show you a couple of these. And by, by no means is this a, is, is this a full list. This is just uh, several things the Holy Spirit laid on my heart. And again, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to take that much long. I'm, I'm totally repentant of going long uh, the last couple of services. And so I'm, I'm just going to go through these uh, basically three points. That, that I, I, just, I, I thought these are just things that, uh, that we need to understand how this works. Because, first of all, let's go to back to Ephesians 2. 
Do, do we have to worry about the kingdom of Satan? Not as long as you're in the kingdom of God. Not as long as you're operating in the kingdom of God. As long as you're yielding to God's kingdom and God's system and God's way of operating, you have nothing to worry about, beloved. Greater is He that is in you. I can't stress that enough. You tell something to go, it has no choice but to go. But in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Huh. So, number one, a way that people step outside of the kingdom is walking in disobedience. Uh, James 4 says, if you know, 4 verse 17 says, if you know the good you ought to do and you don't do it, you, basically you're not operating in the kingdom of God. You're missing it. <laughs> when you, <clears throat> when you are dis, disobeying kingdom guidelines, When you are doing contrary to what you know to do, you will not enjoy kingdom benefits. You open yourself to the, to the kingdom or to the power or the bondage of Satan. <clears throat> oh, Pastor Thad, I think you're taking that too far. Listen. Listen. It says children of disobedience walk in, the, in Satan's power. Not those that are in the, in the kingdom of God. Um, how many times have you ever heard me say this? <clears throat> when the enemy finds what works to keep you home from church, which would be disobedience, going to church would be obedience. Don't be surprised when it happens over and over again. If a headache keeps you home from church, don't be shocked that every Wednesday and every Sunday you got a headache. You're dealing with a headache. If sleepless nights keep you from coming to church on Sundays or Wednesdays, don't be surprised when you are constantly confronted by that in your life. I have said it time and time again. I've watched it happen time and time again. It is astonishing to me how many battles come on Wednesdays and Sundays. Because why? Because you have given him access. The second you show that there is nothing going to stop me from operating in obedience, the second you show him that is the second he, that attack has to quit. And again, if this was something that I'd never seen before and I was just saying off the top of my head to try, but I've seen it work time and time and time and time and time again. That the very thing that keeps you home. Well, I was getting ready for church and my kids just got on my last nerve and I couldn't get it out, I couldn't get out the door. Well, if that's what it takes to get you out, not get you out the door, don't be shocked if every Wednesday put them in the car in their pajamas and tell them, I don't care. We're going to church. If they don't want to go to church. Understand I'm saying this somewhat tongue-in-cheek. If they don't want to go, go to church in their underpants, then they probably need to get their shorts on or pants on and let's get going. Understand, I'm saying some of that tongue-in-cheek. Some of it. The, the, the principle stays the same. Beloved, when you decide to operate in disobedience, you are giving access to the enemy in your life. How about fear? 
Job chapter 3, verse 25 says, For the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I, uh, it, it, <clears throat> excuse me, and that which I was afraid of is come to me. Job had been shut off to the enemy for years. I mean, I, I kind of like what uh, what Keith Moore says about Job is that Job was the uh, uh, star of the time. You know, we've got you know Tom Cruise, we got you know all the the movie stars, we got the athletic stars, we got the every kid wanted Job's poster in their room. He was the wealthiest man. He was the millionaire. He was the one that everybody looked at and envied. He did, the enemy could not touch him, and he prospered. And Satan goes, well, I'd do it. I'd, prosper. I'd, I'd serve you too if I, if I, I do is prosper. <clears throat> and I'll say, all, all Jesus did. God did not give him an okay. He said, man, all you have to do is look. There's a big hole in his hedge that gives you full access. And that hole is, is fear. I mean, t again, time and time again in Scripture, we see fear not. If God was wanting to do something in the midst of his people, his first command was always fear not. Joshua 1.9 is one of my favorite because it says, have I not commanded thee? Which again, it's the only time he says, he, he says, uh, be strong and of good courage regarding the inheritance. Be strong and of good courage about the word. But then this verse 9, he says, have I not commanded thee? In other words, this is something they had heard time and time again. Be strong and of good courage. Don't let the enemy talk you into fear. The Lord's with you wherever you go. Don't let fear have its way. Beloved, we've got to quit fearing the enemy's power. He's been defeated, detoothed, and has no say in your life. Because you're a part of a different kingdom. Now let me hit this point here. Because <coughs> people are going, so I'm not really afraid. It's just, can I, can I bring out the other point that we often uh, fight? I'm not being afraid. I just, we can't tithe right now. Because if we were to tithe, we may not have enough money to pay bills or to eat to eat or to feed the family or to so what you're saying is that you're afraid that you might run out of money if you if you obey God. Beloved, I, I <coughs> fear disobedience is the, at its root is fear. Not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Failure to give at the root is fear. I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the next point is, is, is another point that I'm going to deal with this. But even, even uh, offense and unforgiveness and strife and bitterness and bitter envy at the root is fear. Fear that they're, that I'm not going to get what I, I have come and fear. When you walk in fear, beloved, it would put you directly in the path of the enemy's dominion. And you may you you may have residence in the kingdom of God, but you will you will receive what the kingdom of darkness says you'll get. How much how many things that we did did we do? I think is in in 2020 that w that's root was fear and kept us out of church. I know people that if people are sniffling or coughing in church they just won't come. And they can say, well, I'm just being responsible. I'm just being, no, you're just being disobedient. And the root of that is fear of catching something. I talked not too long ago about the grace that's on you 
if you just do, if you obey what God says to do. <coughs> he will not let you go under. He will not let you fail if you are doing what He told you to do. But fear, again, you fear is not in the kingdom of God. Disobedience is not in the kingdom of God. So if you're operating in those things, you will receive the punishment, quote-unquote reward, of that other kingdom that you're operating in. And how about this one? James chapter 3, <coughs> verse 14. James chapter 3, verse 14, and I'll wrap this thing up. It says, verse 14, But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, don't, don't glory, don't act like you're spiritual, and lie against the truth. And again, how many times is that bitter envy and strife? It just hurts me in the spirit. No, it's, it's a fleshly thing. The enemy only can, can mess with you in the, in the spirit or in the flesh. Because this wisdom, it says, This wisdom descendeth not from the kingdom of God, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. It is the dominion. It is the power of Satan. For where envying and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. So you start living outside of love. You start living outside of peace. You start living outside of kindness and the fruit of the Spirit. You start living outside of that and start living inside of strife and and, and, and causing division and 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 and, and, uh, and, and, and envy in situations. That's where evil work happens. Envy and strife is from the pit of hell. It's the kingdom of darkness. I like First uh, Corinthians fourteen thirty three, where it says God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. <laughs> as in all the churches of the saints. Peace is his kingdom. Strife is the enemy's system. So when you choose, listen, and I love this picture. When you choose to operate in strife and in envy and in bitterness and in unforgiveness and in all those tools of the devil, you're operating in his system and in his system will be the one to reward you. Confusion and every evil work. <coughs> Beloved, we got to understand, there's nothing, nothing to fear in regards to the enemy's wiles. Because we know that the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and you go on and on, the shield of faith... We understand all those things have been given to us to equip us to neutralize any of his attacks. <laughs> but when we lay those things down and begin operating the way the enemy wants us to operate, we're in trouble. Let me read one more scripture and then we'll close. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not stuff. But righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Beloved, in His kingdom, it's relationship. It's rightness with Him. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Romans 8. In His kingdom, it's secure. I, I've heard so many people try to explain the security of His kingdom as you can do anything you want to do and be okay in it. But are you really in a kingdom that you refuse to operate the way the kingdom operates? Isn't that kind of why uh, those that, that are opposed to to uh, illegals coming across the border? Isn't that really that the reason? Is because they're not coming in the right way, so they 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 
they may not understand the guidelines of this kingdom, of this nation, and they can, they, they'll, they'll operate however they want to operate because they didn't come in the right way. Not that we're opposed to, to immigrants coming in. My goodness, bring them in. I, I, that's not a problem. It's just that if you don't come in the right way, you may not have the same reverence for the kingdom that you represent. Beloved, why would you want to be a part of the kingdom of God and just live however you want to live? That doesn't make sense to me. And according to Scripture, if you are, even if you're a part of that kingdom, even if you say, I'm part of that kingdom, and, and you're still subject to the kingdom you act like. I, I, I was going to do it in reverse order. I had, I had the fact that, you know, over in other um, other nations, European nations, uh, drinking age is like 16 or 18. It's very young. Well, if you want to live in this kingdom and you're 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, you don't get to go, yeah, but the kingdom I'm from, the kingdom I used to be in, you're subject to this kingdom. And if you get caught drinking at, at 18 years old, 19 years old, You'll have, the, you'll have the punishment, whatever it might be. You follow me on this. So the point simply is this. Is that, yes, we're right with God. Yes, we're secure in Him. Therefore, we live in peace. We live in joy. We live in love. We live in obedience. We live, we, we live in kindness. We live in all those things that that kingdom operates in. Why? So we can fully enjoy that kingdom. So many Christians aren't enjoying the kingdom. They look at it, look at it as a bunch of rules of do's and don'ts. And it, you know, don't do this and don't do that. And, it, and it's, it's more than that. It's enjoying the rewards of that kingdom. Amen? So let's, let's stand together. And again, that's the point. is that we're not wanting... We're not wanting the, the, them to get born again so they can come and follow rules. We want them to come in and enjoy the benefits. Which means the things that this kingdom says do, you do. Things that this kingdom says don't do, you don't do. It's not part of this kingdom. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. And I trust that the words that I spoke, Father, were words of life and that they're words that, that met our hearts and met, met our lives and met us where we are at. Uh, that, 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 that as much as Pastor Thad spoke, that the Holy Spirit finishes. Gives under, give that understanding, gives that, gives that revelation, that rhema. And Father, I pray, Lord, that we will that you will give us more of a hunger. Because again, this, this, these, these wordings is, is that it's, it's, it's us. It's our responsibility to shine the light, to turn them from darkness to light. It's our responsibility to, uh, to, to turn them from the power of darkness, uh, or the power of Satan, to, to God and to be set free. It's us. It's us doing it. It's us ministering. It's us. It's us witnessing. It's us doing it. If we don't do it, what will happen to our friends and family? Well, Jesus loves them. Let's get, get beyond that. Because there's one way to heaven, and it's through Him. It's through God. It's through Jesus. There's one way. It's not through good works. It's us saying yes to Him. And being a part of his kingdom. So Father I pray Lord that. That A Father you'll put birth in us a new desire for the lost. But second Father. Allow us to recognize the tool of the enemy. To get us afraid. To get us uh, you know, lackadaisical towards how the kingdom of God works. Let us be aware 
so that we can do what we're supposed to do, operate how we're supposed to operate, so we can enjoy what we're supposed to enjoy. We love you, Dad. We love you. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name.